Hello and welcome to the May uh, 2021 Joy of Living Cooking School class. We're so glad you've joined us this evening. My name is Chris. I'm your hostess for the evening. Um, we have uh, minimized our resources here in the room. So um, you'll notice there are no um, water tables or, or other resource tables we have, which you um, will be getting tonight on your table currently. Um, if you do need to use the restroom, it is uh, down the hall and around the corner. Um, but uh, we do not have water at your stations. Uh, if you do want some, we're hoping that uh, you all brought your own, but we do have some on hand. We just um, we weren't sure exactly how to handle that. So. Um, contact someone if you'd like that. But uh, we'll only be doing an hour program or so this evening, so it will be a little shorter than usual as well to keep our minimization <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, we're here though. <laughs> That's right. So um, we are still posting these online, so that's why there's a camera here involved. And um, so that will be available later as well as the um, other resources there so you can access those at our website. But we want to start off here with our devotional, and Leanne is here to do that. You're somewhere. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I tell you, just we met last month, and I was just a little bit tingly over it, and today I'm just beside myself. I'm just so excited everyone's here. Thank you, Jeremy. So when I first became a Christian, I... Um, was in the California Conservation Corps. And if you're familiar at all with the CCC, it is designed for 18 to 24 year olds from all walks of life. And so I was mingling with people from all walks of life. And I had given my heart to the Lord. I was a brand new Christian and I was lonely. I needed a friend. So I prayed, Lord, I really, really need a friend. And one evening, I was at dinner, I was by myself, and a young lady came to my table, and she said, hi, my name's Julie Leanne. And I said, Julie Leanne, that's a weird name. And I took my tray and left. <laughs> and so, thank goodness, Julie was dedicated to being my friend, because she continued to pursue me. <laughs> and I'll tell you, she was the best friend ever. Julie's background was that she came from the gangs of Sacramento, and she would tell some of the most horrific stories of organized battles with ever, other young women who were in other gangs. And it would make your hair curl, I tell you. It was just extraordinary. The thing of it is, is that's not who I had in mind when I asked for a friend. I was asking for a Christian friend. Well, as I continued to grow in the Lord, Julie was attracted to me because of my love for Jesus. And so she began to ask me 20 questions. What about this? And how about that? And this can't be right because of this. And because I was growing in the Lord and I was very excited about it, I was filled with answers from Scripture. Well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And pretty soon, Julie gave her heart to the Lord. So we were best chums. And we got stationed up in Mendocino County. And we were doing stream clearance, which was fabulous, by the way. And Julie, she was still palling around with people who were doing things that I would not do, okay? So I was concerned for Julie. And I was reading a book called The Great Controversy. And in the book, it quoted 2 Peter 2, verses 5 through 7. Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Now, <clears throat> Picture this, Julia and I are on a trail, 
<clears throat> and it was after work, very hot. We were going down to the swimming hole. I'm walking behind Julie, and I'm reading her these scriptures. If you do this, ye shall never fall. So Julie wanted to show me this swimming pond. And <clears throat> we had to climb down a hill, and we got onto a deer trail, and then we worked our way down to the side of a cliff. And then we had to maneuver ourselves down to the bottom of this cliff to the swimming pond. We got in there and we started swimming and it was the perfect temperature, it was a hot day, there was so much to see, there was a water snake in there and so we got to get all excited about that. And then we remembered we had a crew meeting after work that we forgot about and oh no, we were gonna be in trouble. So we quickly got ourselves together and Julie started heading the long way and I says, why don't we just go back the way I came? we came? It's shorter. And she said, Leanne, we can't go back up that way. I said, nah, if there's a will, there's a way. So we started working our way, climbing back up the side of the cliff. Then we maneuvered ourselves up the deer trail, or I did. I was on the deer trail. Julie was not. Julie was climbing up straight up the side of the mountain where the waterway flows in the wintertime. So if you're familiar with that, there's no rocks, there's no limbs, there's no, <laughs> there's no debris to put your feet on, there's nothing to hold on to, and it becomes more and more sheer toward the top. So I happened to glance over at Julie, and she's got herself pressed up against the side of the mountain, and her body's starting to shake because she has nothing to hold on to, and it's taking all of her strength to be there. And I said, Julie, don't let go. And at that moment, she started to slide. And then she gained momentum. And she went faster and faster, and I all I could say, all I could say was, Jesus. And she went over the side of the hill. <sighs> what do you do? So I started slowly maneuvering my way back down to the hill, and I get to the edge of the cliff, and Julie said, I'm fine. Go ahead and go back. What? Are you crazy? I'm not going back. And she goes, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. So I maneuvered myself down the side of the mountainside. And there is Julie sitting on the one protruding rock on the side of the cliff. And if you were to put your hands together like that, that would have been the shape of the rock. And when we, Julie went down, she was face first, slid down, both boots landed on that one rock on the entire sheer face of that mountain. <sighs> we figured out how to get her off the side of the mountain. Then we walked the long way back to camp. I got all the materials to mend all of her scrapes and scratches from head to toe and got her laying down. And she said, Leanne, what was that scripture you read me? Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance, and to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give in all diligence to make your calling and election sure. If you do all these things, ye shall never fall. Julie says, okay. 
I got it. <laughs> you know, last time we were together, we talked about temperance. Temperance is tough, but temperance is a choice. Did, the only thing in that list that is given to us is faith. Faith is a gift. It's a free gift. The, all you have to do is ask, Lord, give me faith, and he's going to give it to you. The rest of those things on that list, we have to choose. And sometimes those choices are tough. But if we do all those things, we shall never fall. There's a blessing in that. Will you guys pray with me? Dear loving Heavenly Father, we want to praise your name for your love and your goodness. We want to praise you for friendship. We want to praise you that we can come together and, and just share your love and your goodness with everyone we come in contact with. Lord, bless each individual here. Fill their hearts to overflowing with your love, your goodness, and your Holy Spirit. And then enable us and empower us to share that love with every person we come in contact with. Lord, help us do whatever it takes so that we do not fall. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, wise words. <laughs> Hopeful words. <laughs> yes, God is faithful. And he's our creator. He made us, and he knows what's best for us. And that includes healthful living. And he will help us all along the way. Here's a couple of little quotes for you. He who has health has hope. And he who has hope has everything. And health is not merely the absence of disease, but the complete state of physical, mental, spiritual, social, and emotional well-being. And you'll notice that there are three circles up there, and they overlap. These represent your mind, body, and spirit. You know, you're, you're not just any one of those, you're all of those. And when you take care of one of those circles, you're taking care of the other two as well. So we want to be taking care of all three of them for a holistic lifestyle, um, healthy lifestyle. And, and Leanne mentioned temperance as part of the New Start acronym to help you remember the eight aspects of a healthy lifestyle. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. All of those components are important in a healthy, balanced lifestyle. So we are gonna kick it off here with our first demonstration. Gary is gonna come and show us how to do chickpea ceviche. Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks for coming. Ceviche, yeah, so ceviche is a dish um, thought to have originated actually in South America and then uh, moved its way up through Mexico. Uh, it's really a process of cooking um, with, uh, with citrus juice. And traditionally you'd use a, uh, an, an, a a fish or shellfish or shrimp um, and marinate it in, in lime juice that it actually would cook the food without heat. Um, it would take the long protein strains and break them down and uncoil them and make it so that the fish actually changed its texture. Uh, well, we're not going with fish. Uh, tonight we're going with uh, chickpeas. Uh, you know, chickpea ceviche, keep the letters in, in shape. So um, this is our ceviche. It's a very simple recipe. First, I have a can of uh, chickpeas. I use uh, low sodium or no sodium added. You want to rinse these really well. Uh, the liquid that comes in the can has a lot of proteins in it, and it, it really has a strong, strong chickpea flavor. Great for your hummus, um, but can be a little overpowering in this dish. So uh, you want to take them out and rinse them really well. I'm going to go ahead and add some diced Roma tomatoes and some red onion, small dice, and some cilantro, okay. 
Now, for our, um, you know, it's not really a brining liquid. It's not really a pickling liquid. We'll just call it our ceviche liquid. Um, we're going to take some orange juice and lime juice and then a little bit of Bragg's amino acid. It kind of gives a, uh, a meaty kind of a flavor to it to substitute for the meat you're not getting in here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add this. And we're going to mix it to combine. Okay. And then we're going to let it sit. Uh, we'll cover it and put it in the refrigerator for an hour. Um, what I personally like to do is I like to actually mix it all in a big Ziploc bag. So I'll dump everything in the Ziploc bag and put the liquid in and then seal it up and kind of mix it around because the liquid gets better contact. Um, if it's in a bowl, you may want to stir it every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just to make sure that you don't have any um, vegetables or beans that didn't get marinated. And there you go. Um, serve it with a, with a tostada. Um, uh, serve it just on the side with some chips like you guys have. Um, you can mix and match it however you want. You can, um, you know, throw avocado in there. You could, uh, oh, good. Um, maybe, some, uh, maybe some sweet bell peppers um, might add a little bit of color. Um, you can even go with other beans if you want to go ahead and, and incorporate black beans. I've even seen ceviche with, um, uh, with uh, other soft ingredients like, well, not soft, but uh, cauliflower is a pretty popular one where you would take the cauliflower and dice it up really, really finely. Not, not as fine as like a cauliflower rice, but, but in small little florets. The only issue I have with the cauliflower is that it takes a long time for the juices to penetrate the cauliflower. So um, this is something you could definitely eat in an hour. Um, what you're eating now, I think I made at 3.30 today. So that's, that's what kind of flavor you can expect two and a half hours later. And that is ceviche. Any questions? It is good. Oh, yay! Laura's back and she said it's good. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> well, fantastic. No questions? So this is a very colorful. Absolutely. So you're eating the rainbow, so that's good. That's good, yeah. Um, and it's fresh and it's whole foods and whole yeah foods. it's and it's it's really really simple um you know uh when we think mexican dishes a lot of times we think a lot of heavy spices or a lot of heat um and that's not really true mexico is is as long as california is so if you think about how many different cuisines we have just trying to get out of the state you've got at least that many um in mexico um probably even more given immigration they have from the south and from the north so um, you know, this is, this is one of those things that really developed on the coast, and it's, it's just a nice little salad. Well, it's actually more like a complete meal. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. It's, um, I mean, the only thing it. you're really missing is the grain. Right, right. You've got the vegetables. You've right. got the protein in the beans. Right, and I think that between the brags and the beans, you may have a complete protein in there. Uh, yeah, no, this will go great with, uh, ooh, like over a bed of quinoa maybe. Or, um, but this isn't really something that's traditionally served heated. It's, it's generally chilled or room temperature at, at best. So, um, but it might go well cooled over a, over a hot bed of rice. Yeah, that sounds good. I did not think of that. That's awesome. Uh, to make it a complete meal, you know, adding, adding a grain to it. Because um, you're really not, I mean, yeah, you're getting corn in the corn tortilla, but it's not really the healthiest of servings. So this is the kind of thing, I have a similar recipe that I, I like to make up for potlucks, okay. you know, at work. Because not everybody's vegetarian there, you just don't ever know what you're going to get. Right, <laughs> right. So, but when I take something that is a, <laughs> it's a complete meal by itself, then if there's nothing else, I can, it's a complete meal for right. me. So, kind of nice, too. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good stuff. Hope, hopefully, um, that will go well for you. So, let's talk about health in a hurry. Everything's in a hurry these days, right? So, how about getting healthy in a hurry? Is that possible? Do you want to feel better and improve your daily eating habits? Are you searching for some practical strategies to accomplish it? You may be busy, 
but your meals can be more than better. They can be bursting with flavor and nutrition. So taking a practical look at how to transform your menu without time consuming complicated routines or recipes. We're talking about health in a hurry. Okay, you've been running all morning. Now all of a sudden, you're hungry. The fridge is empty or you are at work with no packed lunch. You're hungry with no plan and it's time to eat. You ask yourself, what's for lunch? Sticky bun on the run? Burger and shake on my break? Fast, frenzied and failing. We are tanking up, but only fueling sickness, obesity, fatigue, and depression. That's how too many of us are tanking up, but we're only fueling misery, stress, and ill health. Something's got to give, and it shouldn't be your health. Is it possible to enjoy bountiful meals and better health in spite of your crazy, busy schedule? The answer is yes. Bountiful, power-packed meals will yield better health that will help you thrive instead of just trying to survive your busy schedule. Fast food can be good food. Switch to F-A-S-T at every meal. That stands for fresh, affordable, satisfying, and tasty. Try saying that. Fresh, affordable, satisfying, and tasty. <laughs> now, let's look at some tasty tips for quick cuisine that can jumpstart your journey to better health in a hurry. As we explore these general principles, you will come up with some great creative ideas of your own, I am sure. Breakfast bonanza. Start your day off with high fiber, brain boosting breakfast. It gives fill up value and good nutrition. Forget the greasy fast food breakfast muffins, skimpy breakfast bars, and heart-pounding caffeine for breakfast. Let's take a store detour and fuel up with real food that will fire up your brain and body for the new day. You wouldn't take off for work or school with your gas tank on empty, would you? Your body has many metabolic engines that require nutritional fuel, right? Build a better breakfast in three easy steps. Every morning, include fresh fruit, whole grains, nuts, especially walnuts. You need tasty breakfast components packed in a variety of ways to energize you for your morning routine. A healthy portion of fresh fruit, nuts, whole grains, plus some added protein combined to give you a balanced mix of nutrients to fuel your brain providing a steady flow of energy to power you through your day. Just one cup of cooked multi-grain cereal topped with a handful, about an ounce, of walnuts, one cup of berries, and a half cup of soy milk provides about 15 grams of protein, 15 grams of fiber, and brain burst of healthy carbohydrates, vitamins, and antioxidants. Are you in a hurry in the morning and need a breakfast to go? Try peanut butter, whole grain bread, and an apple. Or maybe oatmeal, walnuts, berries, and soy milk. What are some ways to combine these foods for breakfast on the go? You can mix and match, right? How about a sandwich plus fruits and nuts with small soy or other milk? Breakfast shake? Ingredients layered in a sealed container parfait style. Makes them pretty, right? <laughs> Try whole grain crackers, nuts, yogurt, and dried fruit. The British love beans over toast. Would you consider that for your breakfast? One analysis of a, of a four, of four large studies showed that those who ate nuts at least five times a week had a 35% reduction in coronary artery disease. That's from the British Journal of Nutrition in 2006. The Adventist Health Study was the first to show a 50% reduction in heart disease with daily nut intake. Pretty good, right? This was later confirmed by Harvard. Any other uh, simple healthy breakfast ideas would be uh, just building on those from there. 
To keep your brain on focus, be smart with lunch choices too. Foods high in fat and sugar like pizza, shakes, burgers, pies, and fries can cause mental fog, fatigue, and indigestion, making the rest of your day less productive. That's not what we're after, right? Super sandwiches may contain uh, uh, whole grains, healthy fats, garden veggies, and beans. If you want to flourish instead of flounder in the middle of your day, focus on energizing plant protein, healthy vegetable fats, and high fiber carbohydrates. You can find amazing economical choices available in regular grocery stores today. Try avocado, salsa, bean hummus, garden patties, meatless slices, baked tofu slices, pepper, tomato, cucumber, onion, fresh spinach, kale, and on and on and on. So many choices. Be curious and adventurous. A taste for new foods and flavors develops over time. It takes about 10 taste experiences to get accustomed to a new food, and it can really transform mundane meals into memory meals. There are always uh, advantages to adding a greater variety of fresh, wholesome foods to your meals. How about a greater variety of nutrients, more interesting eating experiences, more flavor, more types of fiber, and better gut health. Tote some water and enjoy between your meals to stay hydrated. It aids alertness and digestion and primes you for the next meal. Other benefits of drinking plenty of water between, between your meals are staving off false hunger signals. It displaces soft drinks and other sugary drinks, which we know are not ideal. It improves circulation and delivery of nutrients throughout the body. Other totable lunch tips. Carry a water bottle with you. Use a thermos for hot soup. Keep containers with tight-fitting lids on hand to fill your insulated lunchbox with favorite leftovers. Many people have found health benefits by having two meals a day, breakfast and a midday meal. If you have three meals a day, keep the supper light and simple. Try to eat earlier in the evening, several hours before bedtime. This will help you sleep better, help with weight control and blood sugar balance. Here are a few time-saving tips that can help you in planning your midday or light evening meal. Number one, prepare enough at one meal to last for the next meal or freeze for later. Number two, plan meals around easy soup, brown rice, bean, potato, or whole grain pasta recipes. Use leftovers to make a delicious veg vegetable soup or rice casserole. Keep Number three, keep instant brown rice on hand, as well as frozen mixed vegetables for a quick, tasty meal. Look for quick and easy. Healthy soup cups, instant brown rice, bean soups, or quinoa. There are dozens of delicious vegetarian entrees that are delicious sources of plant protein. From individual items like burgers to complete meals with vegetables. Check your freezer section in the grocery store. A vegetarian diet dramatically reduces the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and many cancers. Eating beans just four times a week was shown to significantly reduce heart disease compared to those who ate them less than once a week. That's from the Archives of Internal Medicine, 2001. Three cheers for salad. They're called raw, raw, raw. <laughs> Sound like a cheer? Raw, raw, raw. <laughs> And, and then we might add another standard that says, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> All right, got that? Raw, 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 chew, chew, chew. Okay. Because it's good for you. <laughs> the crunch factor in raw veggies, fruits, and nuts 
have been shown to promote not only healthy digestion, but also the birth of new brain cells that help improve memory and stave off depression. And that's from Sandrine Thuret, PhD. So number one, start your lunch and supper with fresh, raw salad or veggies. Raw fruits and veggies are low in calories, but high in nutrition, helping weight control. But watch those salad bars. They can stack up to 1,400 calories, more than a cheeseburger and fries, if you're not careful. Some of the toppers are, that are loaded with saturated fat and calories would be bacon bits, crunchy fried onion strips, shredded cheese, high-fat high dressings, and candied fruit nuts. Number two, use brain-healthy fats on salads, such as olive oil and avocado. Complement them with fresh lemon juice. Enjoy your salad with fresh lemon and, dr and a drizzle of olive oil instead of creamy dairy dressings, high in saturated fat and calories. The vitamin C in the lemon juice helps absorb iron. Just in case you didn't know that. So yeah, it's good. Lemon juice also aids digestion and blood sugar control. Lemon's very good for you. Number three, add garbanzo or kidney beans to your salad for a protein boost to your high fiber meal. Just one cup of cooked beans delivers about half the dietary fiber recommended for the whole day. They also provide an extra protein punch. Beans help stabilize your blood sugar, are low in sodium and calories, but high in potassium, flavor, and meal satisfaction. A diet rich in leafy greens and beans is a bone as well as a brain booster. Beans and legumes are rich in bone building minerals, such as magnesium and calcium, and are higher in antioxidants than berries. Wow. Leafy greens are rich in vitamin K. The Nurses Health Study found that women who ate the most leafy green vegetables had only half as many hip fractures as those who didn't. And that comes from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, 1999. Number four, buy shredded cabbage, broccoli, slaw, and shredded carrots to reduce prep time. Look for packaged, prepared veg fresh vegetables for a quick addition to your salad or main meal. They are fresh, nutritious, and ready to enhance a quick salad soup, salad, comma, soup, <laughs> stir fry, sandwich, or whole grain wrap. <clears throat> they cost a little more, but the price may be worth it if it helps you eat more veggies. Prepackaged veggies may also reduce waste. Sometimes veggies are thrown out because they are not used. used. This may even be a money saver in the long run as it adds value to your meals. Now, eating out used to pose a challenge for a health conscious individual. Things have gotten better. They really have mushroomed in the last few years, right? <laughs> Hands back. <laughs> Ask your health conscious friends where and what they eat when dining out. Number one, choose your restaurant that has fresh vegetable and high fiber options. Greek, Lebanese, Chinese, Indian, Mexican, and Italian restaurants all have great vegetarian options. One trick is to view your menu as a list of ingredients. One dish may contain, contain fresh spinach. Another may have artichokes and zucchini. You may notice whole grain pasta, beans, or brown rice as an option. Create your own colorful combination. Number two, mentally rehearse health choices before you go. You have an influence on yourself, so practice making a healthy choice before you arrive at the restaurant. Decide what you will order in advance. Decide how much you will eat as well. Ask your, sorry? Uh, I, I started before going to the restaurant. I started looking the menu up online then I'm not pressured while I'm at the restaurant and the server's there waiting for my order and you can read all the ingredients that help. 
Oh, perfect. That that's what they're talking about then, right? You you're looking at it ahead of time and then you're not as pressured when you get to the restaurant. Yeah. It's a good idea, right? <laughs> Ask your server once you would do arrive about healthy options and fresh items that they may have in the kitchen. You can also ask about vegetarian options such as garden burgers. Sometimes they are not listed on the menu, but you never know. For example, try a Reuben sandwich without the meat, but add sliced roasted zucchini and artichoke hearts if available. That sounds pretty good, right? Delicious. And you know what? The cooks are often happy to vary their routine. They will enjoy creating a delicious vegetarian meal for you. When you ask for extra favors, though, leave an extra nice tip. And I have, I have done that. I've been at, at events where I was the only vegetarian in, in the group, and they made a special plate just for me. You know, they, very, uh, they were very happy to do that. Um, something a little different for them. Number four, you want to eat slowly and enjoy your food and company. One great benefit of a plant-based healthy meal plan is that you can enjoy the eating experience longer. The food doesn't disappear so fast because there is more of it and it takes longer to chew. 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 <laughs> God gave you a rainbow of colorful, satisfying foods to enjoy. Experience the beautiful eye appeal and variety. The fellowship, a relaxed eating environment, and a thankful attitude for such a bounty. After you've eaten, put your napkin on your plate and push it away. Tell yourself, I'm satisfied and I'm finished. Care for yourself. Eat on time and fill your body with foods that strengthen. The timing of your meals matters as well. Give plenty of time between meals for proper di digestion. Pay attention to what you are putting into your body. Some people like to keep a food diary to become more aware of what and when they are eating. Good nutrition will help you enjoy your best possible health physically, mentally, and spiritually. God wants to give you power to make healthful choices for a healthier body, a clearer mind, and a healthy, happier life. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have from God. What an incredible thought. As truly as the living God dwelt in the tabernacle in the wilderness and Solomon's temple in Old Testament times, so the Holy Spirit will dwell in the hearts and minds of those who give themselves wholly to God. The Bible also says you are not your own. You were bought with a price. We are purchased. We belong to God. We are his by creation and redemption, by a precious price paid, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. We are called, therefore, to devote ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, as God directs, to live for him and glorify him as our maker. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. Your choices make a difference, not only in how you feel, think, and act, but also your influence on others. Are you ready to take that step? Are you ready to commit your meal planning to Him? You are of infinite value, and God loves you and wants you to have the energy to participate in life to the fullest, in its joys as well as its challenges. Commit yourself to Him today. All right, are you ready for our next demonstration? Is Gary ready for our next demonstration? <laughs> okay, welcome back. Well, I guess technically you didn't go anywhere. Welcome back, Gary, how's that? Okay, um, fajitas. If you've ever been to a Tex-Mex restaurant or even a Chili's, which pretends to be a Tex-Mex kind of American thing. You've seen somebody walking by, you hear the sizzle of a plate, you get these smells of onions and peppers and look, and they've got this sizzling fajita batter. Um, it's a dish that's traditionally made with a skirt steak, a beef, um, which is a, um, 
uh, kind of a long, thin cup that comes under the belly of the, of the, of the animal. Um, it's only been around for about 100 years. Um, started in San Antonio and then made its way across the United States. So technically, it's kind of a Tex-Mex. The woman that invented it was from Mexico, but it was actually on this side when, I, when it was done. Um, but in the place of beef, we're going to use mushrooms. Um, similar texture, nice flavor, gives you those kind of um, glutamates in there. So let's get started. First thing we're going to need are portobello mushrooms. If you've never seen a portobello mushroom, it is this big. Almost as big as my head. Um, these are great. They're really, really beefy. You'll see these used a lot, um, like in a place of a, of a burger patty where they'll grill them whole. Um, these work really well as, as meat substitutes that, that are natural. But we're going to need to go ahead and clean it a little bit first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break off the stem. And it just comes right off. And then we're going to take these gills out. These really... I don't find them edible at all. Um, I have never seen a recipe that uses them for anything. Um, you can eat them. They're not going to kill you, but they're, they're not the best mouthfeel. When, um, now, all mushrooms have these gills, but if you're doing smaller mushrooms like uh, buttons or creminis, uh, you're not going to notice it. But these big boys, they stand out. Okay, so we're just going to take a spoon and just kind of scoop it out. I'm going to cut these into strips. Okay. Now these are going to shrink a little bit during cooking, so uh, you want to go ahead and do between a third of an inch and a half an inch or so. All right. So now we have our mushrooms. Oh, and then the stem. This is money. These things are a couple bucks a piece, so these, these are good. Um, you'll want to actually kind of trim the end that was exposed to the air because it gets kind of woodsy and kind of tough. So you cut that off. The stem, yes. And then I'll go ahead and just take and cut it in half and then slice that as well. Just because, uh, I mean, I had at one point eight kids in the house at one time, so anything you could do to stretch a meal, you'll, you'll, you'll take. You just don't throw things out. Okay. So now we're going to make our marinade. We're going to grab a large mixing bowl. We're going to add um, some chili powder, chili seasoning. Now, um, there's actually a recipe on the back of your sheet, which is the chili seasoning that I use. And the reason I have that on there is because uh, with the New Start program, we advertise not eating certain foods because of irritants and chilies peppers, cayenne is high on that list of, of things that, that we consider to be irritants. Uh, so um, there's this recipe online that, um, that actually works really well without having chilies in it. Um, so it's, it's, it's got a ground bay leaves and oregano and parsley and um, it's kind of, kind of weird, but you you'll, can kind of decide for yourself what you think of the taste. Um, if this isn't what you want to use, you can go ahead and use um, a prepackaged like McCormick's. I'd suggest using reduced sodium if possible to control the salt intake or any blend of chilies that you like. We're going to go ahead and add some lime juice, a little bit of water, and some crushed garlic. Actually, I think it's minced garlic technically, but. All right, we're going to stir that until well combined. Okay. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and add our mushrooms. Now, you don't have to be super careful. If your mushrooms break up a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to mash at it and have little mushroom pieces unless that's really the consistency you're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and stir this until combined. And then we'll let it rest and set aside, marinate for about 15 minutes. At that point, it's going to absorb all your flavors and seasonings and should absorb most of the liquid that's there. Mushrooms are wonderful sponges. They, they really like soaking up flavors. So while that's going, we're going to go ahead and prepare our vegetables. We've got some uh, sliced white onion and uh, three peppers. I, I used a mix, uh, yellow, red, and orange. 
Um, now, specifically, we, we advocate staying away from green bell peppers. Um, they are an irritant. Um, technically, it's an immature pepper, um, and it, it can cause gastric issues for people. And besides, the, the fully flavored, the fully ripe ones are really, really delicious. So it's like, eh, why do you want that immature thing? But you may not know how to prepare a bell pepper. Some people do get gassy issues with green bell peppers, yes. That, and, and generally, if you have gassy issues, that's your body telling you that something you digested is not something you need to continue digesting. <laughs> just a, just, it's just giving you a hint. So uh, we have our bell pepper. You want to get one that's um, a decent weight for its size. That means it's got lots of natural sugars in there. Uh, you want the skin to be blemish-free. If possible, or a small, you know, minimize blemishes, you can cut them off if you need to. Nice, firm, you don't want any soft spots. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just take it, and we're just going to kind of cut around. We want this fleshy part here. We don't want this white part. That membrane is very, very bitter. And you don't want the seeds because they don't add any flavor. They are bitter, and they're just tough on the teeth. So I just kind of go around and just uh, fillet my bell pepper. Okay. And then what I'm left with is, is the skin, and then there's this little piece right here. And then you're going to go ahead and cut them into slices. If you cut on this side, you run the opportunity of your knife slipping and losing a finger if you're not paying attention. Um, just because this outside coating is doing what it's supposed to do, keep things out of the fruit. So I like cutting from the inside where I can go ahead and um, the flesh, it'll grab the flesh a little bit easier and go through. So I'm just going to julienne these up. Julienne is just a French term for long strips. So I'm going to, in American, cut these into long strips. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I'm bilingual there. I can, I can, I can talk Frenchy foodie and normal. Sorry if there are any French people watching. You're normal. All right. Okay. All right. So, if you're slow like me, by the time you get done prepping, your 15 minutes will be up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a cooking sheet. And we're going to line it with foil to make sure things don't stick. And we're going to go ahead and lay our food out. So I'm going to put the mushrooms in any leftover liquid. As you can see, this already absorbed all the liquid that I had in there. Um, all I've got is this kind of thick paste at the bottom. That is normal. OK. There we go. And then I got some onions, peppers, now you very easily could just mix these up and throw it on, it's not going to be the end of the world, um, but I like the presentation value here. So we're going to go ahead and take this, put it in the oven, 450 degrees for about 25 minutes. You want to go ahead and go until um, you get a little bit of color, a little bit of burnt ends on it, um, and your mushrooms shrink down, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Ooh, my mouth is watering already. So um, when I said I like doing it with the different colors, um, a great serving suggestion is go ahead and get your tortillas and put them on a separate plate or put them on the side. And then people can pick and choose what it is they want. Some people like red peppers better than orange peppers or yellow peppers over the onions. Um, and if you mix it up, it's a great presentation. But if you've got picky, picky eaters, which, again, I had eight kids, so invariably at least 25%, which is two kids, did not want something that was made, um, they can go ahead and pick it out. Plus, it's just a nice little presentation. You just put it on the plate, and, and you go from there. Um, serve it with your favorite topping, you know, some, some guacamole, or if you want to make a, like a cashew cheese sauce. But really, these are pretty good, just nice and, and natural as is. So mushroom fajitas. Um, by the way, the calorie count 
on there is including one standard tortilla. So if you take 90 calories off of there, you're about what the serving is, which is in the neighborhood of 60 or 65 per serving. So it's, it's just to give you full disclosure. Any questions, any comments, thoughts? I'm sorry? Um, actually, avocado would be fine. In fact, I've got avocado in the back if you want avocado. We, um, yeah, um, avocado or guacamole. Uh, the concept of these is really more of kind of a street taco, which are normally served pretty simply, but it's your kitchen, it's your food. Customize it how you'd like. Did you have a question, Vince? No? Okay. All right, I'm getting off question free this month. Oh, yeah, wow. Well, know. you are keeping it simple. It's just... Oh, well... Hey. Good veggies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, well, it's it's pretty easy. These these are. Oh, I do have a question now. Are, aren't bell peppers supposed to be high in vitamin C? Uh, absolutely, and that's uh, mm -hmm. another reason to stick with the nice, bright, colorful ones. Um, vitamin C, vitamin A, uh, especially in your orange ones. Um, yeah, peppers peppers are awesome. They're they're really great. Um, it's just. Uh, the the hot chilies that we that we try and stay away from because mm -hmm. the capsaicin offsets the benefits that we get from uh, from the vitamins. Yeah, great question. Let's talk a little bit about your mind. Taking care of your mind does take some effort. You need a purpose, purpose for your day, a reason to get up in the morning. Work is good to a certain degree, right? A schedule, your body does love schedule. Rest is essential. Exercise, of course. Games are good for your mind and memory activities. And by exercise, we mean exercising your brain. Not, not you know, body's one thing, but mind needs to be exercised as well. So here's some brain teasers for you. What do you call the mushy stuff between a shark's teeth? <laughs> His last meal. <laughs> a slow swimmer. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> a slow swimmer. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Other other things to do for your brain are say things. Fast, and this one three times fast. Are our oars oak? <laughs> All right. Are our oars oak? Are our oars oak? Are our oars oak? Yeah. Tongue twisters. Don't even use your tongue hardly on that one. It's very different, huh? Okay. How does a mouse feel after a bath? <laughs> Wet. Come on now. <laughs> We're not talking about the, the cat that looks like a drowned rat. We're talking about the mouse. <laughs> there we go. Squeaky clean. All right. And where do smart hot dogs end up? Ready? <laughs> On the honor roll. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just a little bit about your mind. Of course, we've been talking about body, basically, with our nutrition, of course, with your cooking and, and that. Um, breathing is also taking care of your body. You do want to do br deep breathing and not just just shallow breathing fresh air is the best sunshine you do want some sunshine no there's lots of talk out there about we need to avoid the sunshine because you know you'll get skin cancer from it however the way to avoid skin cancer is to not get burned so you know when you're outside how long that takes don't stay that long <laughs> Okay, maybe 15 minutes. If you burn really super easy, you may just want to do five at a time. But uh, that sunshine, it, it is very good for us. 
Um, it benefits our sleep, our moods, and uh, gets our vitamin D as well. Very good stuff. Water intake as well as cleansing with water. Washing your hands, your body, those things, um, but also intake with water. Nutrition, we've been talking about rest. Uh, you want to take breaks throughout the day um, periodically so that you, your, your mind and body get a break there, as well as nightly rest with your um, sleep. Get a good seven to nine hours of sleep, depending on your, your needs. Some people need more than others. And, of course, exercise, and this time I'm talking about exercising your body. Very important. And of course, um, if you get outside while the sun is out and the air is fresh, then you get a three-in-one deal. You exercise the air and the sunshine all at once. That's the best. Uh, but if you can't do that, and the only time you have to exercise is when it's dark and early, or something like that, then you may want to be inside, or if it's raining or something like that, then you, you can do something inside. Plenty of videos you can find. Leslie Sansone is one we, we've enjoyed. You can find her on YouTube um, or buy the DVDs. Those um, are readily available. But get moving. We were made for motion, and it definitely benefits all of your health. We won't do any of that here in this program um, currently, but uh, we do it. Uh, encourage you to do that on your own. We recommend the full plate diet. And if you go online to our website and download the welcome booklet, on the very last page of that, it tells you the website to go to. You see, you got to go to our website to find it. Isn't the web great? Um, <laughs> the full plate, there's a site for the full plate diet. And there you can go to find out their resources. And um, it has... Um, calculators and things like that that can help you um, with uh, monitoring your intake. But the basic concept is to fill your plate with dietary fiber. And this, when you eat that fiber, it makes you feel full faster. And that way you will consume fewer calories. And consuming fewer calories than you burn will help you lose weight. And there are so many other benefits to that that diet as well, as we've been talking about. And here's just a little visual of what your plate may look like. Uh, basically has four quadrants. So about half of your plate should be fruits and or vegetables, a quarter of grains, and a quarter of legumes for your um, proteins. Um, and generally, uh, you know that cooked Vegetables or fruits have different nutrient value than fresh, so you want to eat something fresh with every meal. Not just cooked, but you also have something fresh. And look at that rainbow of fresh fruits and vegetables. What a variety. Go check out your produce department. Try new things. Eat a variety. Each, each color represents different nutrient values. So you want to be eating the full spectrum, and you'll be getting nice, broad spectrum of nutrients as well. As far as your water consumption, um, studies have shown that drinking five glasses of water every day lowers your risk for heart disease. So definitely recommend that. But uh, part of the full plate diet and definitely what we um, recommend from here is that you start where you're at. So if you only consume two cups of water a day, don't all of a sudden jump to five or, or more. Work your way up gradually. Your body has been doing things the same way for a while, so it needs time to adjust to any changes that you make. And then it, it applies to our water intake, our exercise, um, you know, the fiber increases, all of those things. Work your way up. Um, but the general rules for water is um, that you do want five to ten cups a day, depending on your body constitution and what activities you are doing. Um, the more active you are, the more water you need, the, the more fiber you eat, the more water you, you need to process. So um, when you get up in the morning, you've been generally uh, not drinking uh, much or at all overnight, so you're probably a little dehydrated. So to kickstart your juices flowing, drink a couple of cups right away. And warm is kind of nice too. Uh, and that gets uh, juices flowing. But uh, then 
throughout the rest of the day, try to avoid drinking with your, your meals because that water dilutes digestive juices and then it also makes your food float. Yes, this may fill you up, but it may also cause heartburn or acid reflux. And then um, once that is digested, you will feel hungry quickly. So it's best to uh, consume your water separately from your meals. Um, uh, stop drinking about a half hour before your meal and don't start until about two hours after. That's ideal. You know, you have to work with your schedule and figure out what works, works for you. But then as you consume your water in between your meals, drink two to three ounces at a time, just a little bit at a time because your body can only absorb and utilize that because you do need to replace what you've been using. I've been using a fair amount here talking. And of course, breathing takes uh, moisture and, and eyes and your whole body uses all kinds of liquids and fluids. So you need to replace those and it can only take it, um, and replace those a little bit at a time. If you drink a bunch all at once, it goes straight through and doesn't get um, to replace the things that you've lost. So apply that as you can. And then of course, we want you to take care of your spirit um, to uh, take care of that third section of the circles. Um, generally, the, um, there are several areas. Uh, socialization can be included in this. Study, especially Bible study, prayer, and trust in God. And I want to invite forward at this point our pastor Vince to talk to us a little bit more about spirit. Good, thank you. So he has one question to ask this teacher, and it's a trap question. He's trying to get Jesus to say something that they can use against him later. But Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. What an amazing answer that Jesus gives. And there's no response listed in the Matthew account, but Jesus elaborates on that. And we understand that God is a spirit from the scriptures. This is the theology of the Old Testament. So when Jesus says how... Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. How do we practically do these things? How do we, how do we love a spirit? Well, it says in the second commandment, how you do it. You ever thought about it like that? You, sh you will love God the same amount that you love the least person in your life. You will love God the same amount that you love the person that you love the least in your life. In other words, if you have hate in your heart, it's very difficult to love a spirit. And I would also point to Psalm 119 as the practical way to love God. Psalm 119, longest psalm in the Bible, all about the character of God. Just for one example, Psalm 119, 9 through 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Just in three verses we've seen that this psalmist is loving the character of God with all of his heart. And... As Jesus says, we love our neighbor as ourselves. we fulfill the golden rule. And that's a challenge for many of us. It, it causes us to help our spirits grow like Leanne was talking about. And so remember, your love for God will be the same as the person that you love the least. And guess what? 
God can give you love for that person who you don't love. God can take your heart of stone, transform it into a heart of flesh, but because guess what? Someone in your life may have that same feeling about you and be praying about God's love for you in their heart. So I hope that that helps you. And shall we close with a prayer at this point or a little later? Okay. Yes, yes. God bless you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Vince. Yeah, we're going to um, call the team. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> Um, our presentation I've, um, was borrowed from Lifestyle Matters and used by permission. Um, those of you online with us, uh, you can submit your name for a drawing. You can leave a comment or email to the office at woodsidesda.org or leave any comments. So then also looking forward to programs on this campus. Um, in person, with good weather, and according to safety protocols, Saturday mornings, 9.30, we do Bible study, and 11 o'clock, our divine worship hour. We would be happy to have, us join, ha happy to have you join us at any time. Our next program for Joy of Living will be on June 19, and our recipes will be about barbecue. So Gary's going to be gathering those. <laughs> and other programs, you can always come go to our website and see what else is going on there, woodsidesda.org. So um, to introduce you to the team, um, here we have, of course, Pastor Vince, and then here's Leanne and Diane and Anne and Annie. You sensing a theme here? <laughs> <laughs> with Sarah in her arms, and Gary, and Karen coming around, <laughs> and Jeremy's running all the sound and camera equipment. Please help me thank the team for all the work they've done to put this program together. Oh, thank you. And uh, you may have met Brent and Claudia in the parking lot as you came in. Definitely vital. <laughs> components to our program here as well. We're glad you could be with us this evening, and we want to send you off with a song in your heart. I have chosen, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, as you look down from your throne above, we thank you for listening and hearing. And as you minister to us, give us love in our hearts for one another so that we can practically love you with all of our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Thank you for the lessons we've learned today recipes we've tasted, and for the team that has taught us. We ask for a blessing on everyone here. And we ask for one day we can eat from the tree of life for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.